subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates thank you so much today for joining us on this panel discussion on child protection issues uh, we are honored to have uh, three eminent members of parliament who have been vocal advocates on issues of children and women uh, and it's such a honor to have uh, ms aprajita sarangi mr gorav gogoi and mr banda prakash uh, along with our anchor ruhi i'll take a brief minute to introduce each one of them uh we have ms avrajita sarangi who is a uh, not just a member of parliament but she was also an ias from the 1994 batch she represents uh, bhuvaneshwar in lok sabha and uh, she comes from a very eminent background having not just worked in the ministry of women and child but having done so much for women including supporting them on creating things like self help groups thank you ma'am for joining us uh we have uh, mr gorav gogoi who is the co-convener of the parliamentarians group for children uh he is uh, someone who has also very openly advocated for issues of uh, women and children uh including speaking number of times in parliament about that he represents kalia board from assam thank you so much sir for joining us today uh and we have mr banda prakash who is the uh, floor leader for trs um, he's also rajya sabha mp uh, from telangana he has a phd from kakatiya university and a ma from osmania university thank you so much sir for joining us today um our anchor today is ruhi tiwari who is from the print has extensively worked on issues of development political economy and governance uh, ruhi it's a pleasure to have you anchoring you. Uh, this panel today uh, ruhi i'll hand over to you and uh, please uh, let's get started right right Uh, thank you so much Ritwika for these introductions uh, you've made my job easier um, thanks a lot so you know when all of this the covid-19 pandemic the lockdown a lot of focus has been on vulnerable and marginalized groups like the poor like the daily wage earners like the migrants but somewhere down the line we have forgotten another vulnerable another uh, perhaps uh, you know very very deprived group which is children who don't have adequate protection of course there's also the question of women so a lot of discussion needs to happen around women children etc who can who could possibly face a lot of domestic abuse or abuse at centers or adoption homes or wherever they are they have been put up um so thank you swaniti for organizing this event this discussion in collaboration with the print the idea is to talk to each of these mps uh, eminent mps as jitika rightly pointed out about how women and children or particularly children actually in this context need to be protected the government needs to have that conversation more so let me begin with uh, ms sarangi who because you know she has been on both sides of uh, the divide on the political side now but she's also been uh, a former ias officer who has worked on in the develop on the development side i remember her distinctly from my days of covering the national rural employment guarantee act when she was joint secretary in charge of it so a uh, welcome ms sarangi let's begin by talking about we'll come to your specific states and we'll come to your specific uh, constituencies a little later in the conversation but let's begin by talking about how serious how critical do you think this issue is because as ritika ritika pointed out you have worked with women and particularly we are focusing on children in the past uh, thank you ruhi uh, in fact i would uh, thank you for having brought up a very relevant topic in these difficult times if we talk about the possible abuse of children nothing could have been better nothing could have been more relevant in fact i come from orissa i represent uh, bhubaneswar parliamentary constituency in the lok sabha and uh, having worked in this sector for quite some time and now as the member of parliament on the other side of the table i can uh, definitely say that uh, there are two kinds of cases one is right. cases which are reported of uh, different kinds of abuses i won't say it's just sexual abuse different kinds of abuses and of course and there, there is a different category of uh, cases which is not reported happening everywhere but for some reason or the other not reported so cases reported and not reported uh, these are the two major concerns as far as my state is concerned i would definitely say that uh, in the wake of covid 19 there has been very strict enforcement and i would just say that we are very lucky not many cases but let me honestly tell you that my constituency bhubaneswar is among the 170 hotspots so right. that's the only 
constituent, rather, it's the only district which is the hotspot in Odisha. I would uh, definitely say that uh, there are many uh, child line 1098. If you actually analyze the figures in the last two, three months, you would see there is a spot. There is right. definitely a big increase, big leap. So there are definitely cases, but I would definitely say that there are cases which are under the profit. So people like us, uh, the people who are working with the community, I think we all need to come forward. We all need to work together with the people, cutting across party lines with everybody together, bring everybody on board. And these cases are not just reported, but also acted upon promptly, and there should be a very positive response. Right. Now, before I come to Mr. Banda Prakash, let me just read out some statistics that I have in front of me. Uh, as Ms. Sarandi was pointed out, there has been a spurt of calls that have been made to Helpline for children. Um, as on April 8, 2020, the Childline India Helpline received more than 92,000 SOS calls asking for protection from abuse and violence in 11 days. Now, this has increased. This is a number that has increased by 50% since March 24, 2020. That is the day of the imposition of the lockdown. So you can see how there has been a sharp increase in uh, the number of SOS calls that are being made for the protection of children. Mr. Banda Prakash, let's talk a little bit about your state. And I'm very happy to have you there because we have two representatives from the BJP and the Congress. But we also have a regional party, which I think is very, very imperative to get that perspective. How is this issue of violence against children and women during the pandemic, during the lockdown, being viewed in your state, in Telangana? Thank you, madam. Uh, the first state, uh, Telangana state, taken uh, uh, several measures uh, to control COVID-19 since uh, first week of the March itself. Perhaps this is the first state which has started uh, maintaining good environment in uh, Telangana state. We have continued uh, 20, on 22nd onwards, Janta Karki to completely lockdown. We announced up to 31st. After that, central government also taken a decision to continue that up to April 14. Now it is continued up to our state taken a decision to up, up to 30th. Now it is right. extended to third also. Second thing, particularly these uh, hotspots are more are at Hyderabad. Hyderabad, uh, some hotspots are almost on more than 50 number is at Hyderabad. Some other district, particularly urban areas are having some hotspots in particular districts. Number of the districts, that is not uh, this one. Because it is a cropping time, it is coming into the uh, purchasing time. The, our state is taken a decision to open the markets in the rural villages itself. They are purchasing at the villages only. Every day our uh, activity is going on in the rural areas particularly under the supervision of the officials. All villages also now they are under the quarantine, self-quarantine and villages all, already they are not allowing anybody to come inside unless and it is the official act. Particularly this problem is very less in Telangana. As on today, the cases reported Earlier, uh, this is uh, some statement by a prominent uh, Telugu daily that is only single cases uh, uh, child abuse is reported and uh, two is child marriage cases are reported as on today. Uh, that also we have to look into that. Wherever the problem is there, def definitely we have to attend and we have to do something for that. Second right. thing, what, whatever the particular this problem is on migrant labor families, they are facing some problem. Already, here we have taken some decision to protect the migrant families, but their psychology is to they wanted to reach their uh, home towns. So they wanted to travel 1000 kilometers. The elder people, they can travel, but particularly the children, uh, they are also following the parent. That is the major problem. Now we are looking at the uh, particularly this time, that how to handle that problem also we have to take some initiatives in that problem also. Right. Um, Gaurav, you know, Assam is uh, was one of the states where COVID-19 came in a little later. Um, as we were talking about before this discussion began, the number of cases in the Northeast is also relatively less touch board, fortunately, so far. But even so, the problem of lockdown and this issue about women and children being locked down inside their homes or at shelter homes or wherever they are, 
is as relevant to Assam to the rest of the Northeast. As a parliamentarian, what is it that you can do, uh, not just for your constituency, but for the rest of the region, for the rest of your state, to sort of mitigate this problem a little bit? Well, Rohi, the first thing that worries me is the quality of nutrition. You understand that when children were coming to schools, especially coming from vulnerable areas, such as those belonging to the tea garden communities or tribal communities or living in the borders, when they, such children come to school and they get the midday meal, that's a very decent source of nutrition compared right. to what they get at their homes. Now the ration that is coming so that from the from the government, they are not getting enough proteins in it. They are not getting enough green leafy vegetables and fibers in it. So what we are doing uh, in my constituency is to reach out to various civil society organizations, farmers groups, and ensure that vegetables are being provided to the fam uh, to the children uh, and to the families who send the children to schools. We're ensuring that seeds are also provided so that they can grow certain kinds of herbs and certain kinds of back do certain forms of backyard farming. Right. Number two is the, this is an unprecedented time. The deep psychological impact uh, that is being felt on a child's mind just cannot be imagined. While children in urban areas have access to technology and social media, uh, children in poorer areas, both in urban and rural, they are living in a very confined space without access to technology and are living with parents who themselves are frustrated, who right. themselves have lost their job. And guess where the frustration of the parents is coming out? It is coming out on children. And you've mentioned that there's been a spike in the calls of uh, the child helpline. So what is needed is also that along with our district officials and our police officials, we need to ensure that our Anganwadi workers are going out and are counseling the parents, teaching the parents how to engage with the children. So the role of media, the role of you know, print media, the role of electronic media to reach out to parents, to help them uh, you know, so engage with their own feelings as well as care for the children in such an unprecedented time is essentially very important. And I've written to the Chief Minister of Assam as well to ensure right. that children become a focus. And what is most uh, sad to see is that nobody is talking about disabled families. Mm. Nobody is talking about children with disabilities. Nobody is right. talking about children with mental health issues. They need a proper system. You know, what, some children can tweet and get access and get help from the state or the central government. But there is a lack of a clear roadmap and a blueprint, especially for children living with disabilities and mental health. At, at, at this time, you know, whenever there's a crisis, where there's an earthquake or a flood, in Assam, we see there's a spike in trafficking, in child trafficking. Right. And we are finding cases like that now as well, that as, as families are being pushed deeper into poverty, many of, of them are, are pushing their children into traffic and getting in touch with uh, the trafficking syndicate. The police has to be extremely vigilant in such a case. Right. Gaurav, I'll come back to you later. I want to ask you this question about social media and access to internet, etc. and those who don't have. So we will come back to that conversation a bit later. But uh, Ms. Sarandi, you are from the ruling party. Uh, what is it that the government can specifically do? What kind of targeted measures can they take to protect these vulnerable communities? Because as I said earlier in my introduction, a lot of conversation is already happening around migrant workers, around daily wage earners. In fact, yesterday, Mr. Rahul Gandhi addressed a press conference also talking about the poor. But nobody really seems to be talking about children and women who could be vulnerable to abuse. Or as Gaurav said, the lack of nutrition that perhaps children are at this point being subjected to. See, I would uh, look at it from a different perspective. We are not just, just not talking about nutrition. We are talking about holistic development of children, the security of children, the protection of children. And when we talk of security, when we talk of protection of children, we are definitely talking about their physical health too, mental health too. And that means we are talking of nutrition too. Uh, now, a couple of things I would definitely like to point out. The central government has been uh, releasing lots of funds to the state government under different schemes for women also, for uh, different vulnerable communities. And when we talk of vulnerable communities, we definitely mean children. So I would definitely say that uh, under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Modi, 
the central government has been taking all steps to handhold these states in this field too. But a couple of things I would like to place before you. One, there are there is a plethora of laws, I would say. You know, if I start counting, there would be no end to it. Uh, Prohibition of Child Marriage Act, we know it's, it's 2006 Act. Then the Child Labor Act, then the Moral Traffic Prevention Act, then the Juvenile Justice Act. And very recently, the Lok Sabha, we amended the Protection of uh, Children so. Against Sexual Offenses right. Act of 2012. This was amended. I would definitely like to point out here that uh, it is not just enough to have laws and acts and guidelines and legal frameworks. Ultimately, it boils down to how we implement it. We have to build a kind of a social narrative. We have to build a kind of environment which is pro-children. Now, as far as the number is concerned, if I go over the 2011 census figures, it's 47 crore 20 lakhs, right, at that point of time, below the age of 18. Now, definitely this number must have, must have changed drastically. Uh, we have a huge number below 18 now. But at that point of time, it was uh, 472 million. So I think we are talking about a, 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 a good segment of our population, which I would say is not only the future, but also the present. Let's not call the children only the, the future. They're also the present. We have to see that they are taken care of well. Uh, this is one, the implementation part. This has to be looked into very seriously by all of us. And there has to be a social narrative in favor of the children. That environment building has to be done. You know, civil society has to play a role, as Gaurav said. Media has to play a role. All of us, you know, the people's representatives have to play a role. And number two, I would say, see, when I was secretary of education in my state, with all humility, I would say, uh, we had uh, started a, a school helpline, I remember. And that particular number was written all across in regional language in Odia, all over, all government offices. And uh, whichever private house volunteered, we had also written uh, the, that particular number on that particular house. What I'm trying to say is it should be properly disseminated. If there is a child line number, 1098, it is the responsibility of all of us, whether government or outside government people, to actually popularize that number. This is this related to this, I would say, as I mentioned earlier, it's not just important to have cases reported. Cases should be acted upon. Only then the credibility comes. Only then the confidence in the system comes. So it's very important to monitor. There has to be a monitoring strategy in place as to how that particular uh, uh, problem that has been actually, you know, kind of articulated is looked into. Now, the third thing I would say, Post-COVID is the challenge. See, right now we are all inside doors. Some cases are reported. Of course, there is a spurt. And some cases are under the carpet. But the problem is after this, after this COVID challenge is over, fortunately, uh, I mean, if we are all lucky, it will come soon. Uh, we, have, uh, we would be having lots of children who would not come to the school. That's the time when, you know, the, 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 the A&M's role comes. The Anganwadi Didi's role comes, the, the school teacher's role comes, the, the government roles come, the NGO's roles come. In fact, all of us will have to see that all these children who are at home have, have integrated themselves again with the school. And related to this, I would definitely mention that there should be online lessons now. In fact, it has started in many of the cases, but in urban areas. Can't we have uh, the, the classes uh, started by all of us put together, you know, the classes must start. In rural areas, we can think of some printed material distribution if there are uh, online issues. Now, uh, the next thing I would definitely like to point out, we will never ever succeed going by my limited experience in administration and now as a politician, as a, as a people's representative, I would say nothing succeeds unless and until we have a wonderful communication strategy. If we are winning today, and I'm sure the government is going to win, the central government is going to win in this battle along with the state governments, it is just because there is a wonderful communication strategy in place. So we have to have a, 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 a community-based understanding of issues, proper awareness generation drives all over. There has to be an environment creation, a very proactive role has to be played by each one of us. Right. Last but um, not the least, I would just mention that I've just written there. You know, there there are there are children, there are children who are staying in orphanages. There right. are children who are staying in in shelter homes. Right. What about them? In fact, many of them are 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 uh, you know contacting me saying that they don't have resources. And they're the most vulnerable. To, 
They are very vulnerable. In fact, I would say much more than they are in the homes. I've right. just written to Honorable Chief Minister of Orissa and also to uh, Minister, Honorable Minister, Social Justice and Empowerment, Government of India, and Honorable Minister, Women and Child Development, Government of India, for releasing grantee day for six months to all these organizations immediately. Thank you. Right. So, you know, let me read out a few more statistics. Uh, when I mentioned earlier about the calls that were made to the Childline India Helpline Center, um, and I said they've increased by 50%. Well, some of the calls received following the lo lockdown dealt with physical health. That was 11% of the calls. So 11% dealt with physical health. 8% dealt with child labor. Missing and runaway children was 8%. And homeless children, calls related to homeless children were 5%. Uh, the National Commission of Women, on the other hand, has received 302 complaints, or it received 302 complaints in February and 217 in January. Now, look at the figure in uh, post March. It rose by 100. And, it rose from 116 in the first week of March to 257. So clearly, there is a spurt when it comes to the lockdown. Uh, Mr. Banda Prakash, you know, you did mention that there has just been one case. I think you said of reported child abuse in um, your area and your region, but Clearly, there is a gap between what is reported and what really happens. And that is exactly what we need to target. You know, not everything oh. is reported. And how do we sort of address that anomaly, that gap? Madam, we should uh, make uh, clear uh, uh, some programs should be taken to uh, create awareness for among the public. We should use the media, particularly media, so many programs are coming. The central government should initiate some program for the welfare of the children and the betterment of the children and family relations strengthening. They are now they are uh, transmitting some serials and other things. Because uh, besides that, how to uh, give more education to the families, how to protect their children, how to educate their children, how to promote their children in a good, a good environment, how best their family relations will be strengthened. Such type of the education that should be given by the government of India by using the particularly this uh, uh, TV. Uh, TV, almost all it is internet, it may not be accessible to so many people. Right. But TV, TV is now accessible to number, very, uh, that number is very high. Second thing, whatever the things uh, Madam mentioned right now. Right. Uh, and another thing is midday meals, what they are losing. In Telangana government, we have taken the step to giving 12 kgs rice per person in the every family free of cost. And apart from that, 1500 rupees per family, we are already uh, created their accounts. Even migrant laborers, we are giving to the 12 kgs rice or wheat per family and 500 rupees per person, we already distributed. Almost all 3 lakhs migrant workers identified in Telangana. Right now, we have included all old age homes and physically challenged the homes and orphan homes also included into distribution channel or PDS distribution channel. Right now, we are protecting all the, this one. But number of the cases, I rightly, what you have pointed out, I will endorse with your opinion. Reporting may be less, but value may be more. How right. to uh, reach them, that is the strategy we have to adopt. Thank you. Right, right. Gaurav, you know, we were talking about the internet earlier. I mean, it's true that some children have access to the internet so they can perhaps tweet or put out a post on Facebook if they need help, if they need any kind of rescue. The less privileged don't. But the internet has a flip side as well. And I think abuse can be also through the internet. There is a certain protection that children also need from the internet, particularly in time of lockdown, where there's nothing else they're doing except perhaps sitting at home and surfing the internet. How can that problem be addressed? Well, I think you're, you're absolutely right. Now, what is happening is that, you know, parents who are not used to being with their children 24 seven because they're working uh, outside their homes for eight hours a day are now are lying cooped up and the child is getting frustrated. The parent is getting frustrated. So what the parent normally does is just to give a mobile uh, their mobile with 3G or data to the children and the children are surfing. Now this is unsupervised surfing 24 right. seven. And that's the time when online predators, child abusers, you know, potential, you know, who want to, uh, you know, cause harm, uh, either physical or mental harm to the child. They are absolutely having an unsupervised uh, uh, attention 
uh, on the children. So therefore, you know, we need to be much more vigilant. And that's why I'm saying one of the first things that we need is to help and enable our parents. The, our parents right now don't have the tools. This is unprecedented. They don't have the tool as to how to care after the child's holistic development needs. And therefore, the role of media, and it need not be only state-sponsored media. I think the state government, whether at the state level or at the central level, can partner with private companies, private educational companies, and come up with smart digital content that can be played on television, that can be played on radio, that can be showcased in print. Because that's something, that's, that's some daily structured time that children, whether they're in urban areas or rural areas, will have access to. Uh, one more point, uh, Rohi, um, you know, this is something that came up yesterday in Rahul Gandhi's video conference as well, that there needs to be a bottom-up approach. There needs to be a decentralized approach, a, a, a grassroots approach, and not a top-down approach. Because the central government might having might be doing pumping a lot of money, but the central government will not have the data on where in my Lok Sabha constituency, where are the vulnerable children? Where do the vulnerable families reside? Are the vulnerable families actually getting uh, the 1,000 rupees or not? So therefore, the bottom-up approach, the role of districts, the role of block-level administration right. Right. Uh, is much more important because they have the data. They know whether the vulnerable uh, uh, families are getting the money or not. Many families are not even having ration cards right now. Right. So they're not getting uh, the, 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 the food support. And even the cash support that has been given, 1,000 rupees, I think that's quite limited. It needs to be ramped up. We've in the past asked for a higher cash financial support to the range of 6,000 rupees or 7,000 rupees. That would be much more substantive than the 1,000 rupees or 500 rupees that are going into Jandhan accounts. So it has to be a bottom-up approach. You have to take the private sector, the non-profit sector, civil society, and the role of media communication in not only reaching out to the children, but reaching out to the parents is also very essential. Right. Now, you know, we don't have much time, but I'll ask all three of you one last question. So, you know, this is something what the pandemic has done, has shown our political class can come together to work uh, when there is an urgent situation, when there is an unprecedented situation like this. So the last few weeks have seen the true spirit of what Prime Minister Modi has often spoken about, which we've never seen from either side, either from the government side or from the opposition side of cooperative federalism. There has been a lot of conversation between chief ministers of various states and the prime minister and the center about what to do next, how to handle the pandemic and the lockdown. So all three of you, just a question. Do you think a concerted dialogue is needed between states and the center on the issue of women and children, the vulnerable groups and the abuse they are possibly facing amid the lockdown? Ms. Sarangi first. Certainly. In fact, uh, cooperative federalism is at its best now. While the central government is handling COVID-19, you can see the, the, the entire process has been a great example of cooperative federalism. No step has been taken without consulting the states. There have been series of consultations, if I can say that. So I think on this issue also, there should be a concerted effort and there would be, in fact, uh, any kind of pan-India decision when it is taken in the interest of the vulnerable communities like for women or children, I think there should be concerted efforts. And let me honestly tell you that uh, Jahan bhi, Jahan bhi, as Prime Minister always says, so Jahan ko bhi bachana hai. And at the same time, I would say that uh, development does not uh, see party lines. In fact, cutting across party lines, we have to come on to the same platform, onto the common platform and work together. Right. Uh, Dr. Prakash? Madam, totally, uh, whatever the things now saying in a moving in country, that is in the right direction. Center and states working together to control the COVID and uh, after that also for uh, revival of the economy also they will work together. At the same time, we have to take care of the children and women also. That is a very, very important. One is 50%, another is one third population in the country. Uh, particularly children, uh, education side, uh, what is the steps we have to initiate? Not only uh, online education, and uh, I don't think we of, only uh, in the month of May or June we will be free from COVID. Even that 
limited lockdown will be there how to we have to behave how to our uh, self protection should be there how we have to protect the society a lot of education we should give for the society itself now but uh, we never uh, look at so many people are uh, arguing pre covid or post covid post covid there is a uh, unless until there is a vaccine we cannot uh, say that word but right. after the lockdown what will be our life what are our, uh, our functions particularly the section schooling how we have to protect the schooling of the children how we have to protect the rights of the women that is also very very important i think right uh, gorav you. you belong to a party which is the arch rival of the bjp so do you think a conversation is required between the center and all state governments all state chief ministers on this particular issue rohi on on this particular issue from day one we've been saying that we need to wage an all out war on corona virus in which the entire country needs to stand together 1.3 billion indians we stand together united in solidarity i think we can take on corona virus its immediate challenges and the post covid challenges as well but we need to have a people first uh, approach it is not just about the central government or the state government or political parties it's about people putting people first and at the center Absolutely. of your approach and whether, whether that's children whether that's migrant laborers whether that's the disabled community if we understand from their perspective what are the troubles they're going through i think it's fan, you know my heart goes out that you have all these migrant laborers all these people who are suffering so much but they know that if they stay in isolation if they stay in quarantine they are saving not only themselves but their fellow citizens as well i think if any my hat goes off it goes off to all the poor marginalized vulnerable sections of india who have taken unbelievable burden and stress and despite that are are cooperating are coping and those are the true warriors it's the doctors it's our nurses those are the frontline warriors and i'm sure in the end we will come out successful uh, with on uh, on this war on corona virus well this was a very very important much needed conversation about the vulnerable groups that are not being talked about as much children and women so thank you so much uh, dr banda prakash ms prajita sarangi and gorav for joining in this uh, interaction that was done with in collaboration with between swanathi and the print this will be put up on our youtube channel soon so i'm hoping all of you would share it generously so that more and more people can watch this very important interaction